The name of the test fire was Trinity, symbolizing the mythological Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. And Dr. Oppenheimer was coming back from the observation post where there were three electric wire stands designed like a cross right behind the Jeep of Oppenheimer. And you know that the term Trinity is also connected with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And there were also three people coming together. Was that cinematic shot intentional by director Christopher Nolan? When every member of the FAECT was chilling and screaming on the success of the nuclear bombing on Japan, this was the only guy who was looking nervous in the crowd. Does he have a social anxiety issue like me, or was he just not paid enough by the production manager to smile? In the same footage, you can get to see fat Justin Trudeau to the left side of the crowd looking half Asian. If you look at the crowd again, you can see a couple of unusual things among the people. For example, this guy to the right side looks a lot like Benji from the Mission Impossible franchise. This man in a yellow dress, I mean woman, looks a lot like a man to be honest honest. Like what the fuck? Look at this old man clapping. His facial expression seems a lot like he was in a vixen club clapping at the topless pole dancers. Now look again. Our previous fat Justin Trudeau from Asia was standing to the left side of the crowd but now he's standing to the right side of the crowd. Is that a magic? Dr. Oppenheimer. If you look at the paint with an intrusive mind, you can get to see a man standing with an underwear, long boot and naked belly. Is that real? Definitely not. But the picture can be viewed a lot like this. Look at the long form magazine picture of Dr. Oppenheimer and you can find him holding a cigarette. And you know what? Dr. Oppenheimer used to be a chain smoker in real life. That's a very cool detailing. Can you imagine a magazine cover where Tony Stark is holding a cheeseburger or a pack of dried fruits and nuts? MCU should have tried that. Let's get started. I have discovered many scenes of Dr. Edward Teller sweating profusely even during winter. Now, there can be one of the two possible reasons behind that. Teller was afflicted with hyperhidrosis which makes someone sweat profusely even when the temperature is cold and the patient is not performing any physical labor either. This continuous sweating was the result of radiation side effects. But the first theory makes more sense because if the sweating of Teller was due to the result of the radiation proximity, the others could also have the same issue. Fuchs was directly involved in the development of the implosion device and he was never sweating like Teller did. Fuchs, you take Teller's role, I'm putting you exclusively on the implosion device. No one else was seen to be sweating for even once. And the first time when Edward Teller came to Los Alamos, there was no uranium in the beginning as the research facility was still under construction. When's this place supposed to open? Two months. Yet Teller was seen to be sweating. Even during his testimony before the AEC board, he was still sweating. Sorry. Definitely the problem was within himself, which history never decided to scrutinize. You'll lose your job. You will lose your reputation. We'll lose our house. There goes a Brendan Fraser from Ohio. Do you remember this NPC among the board members of the AEC? This man was literally vanished in the hearing session. Did he just die and respond to the nearest hospital? A man appointed not by the board, but by Louis Strauss. Admiral Strauss was previously seen to be rubbing his forehead with the tip of his fingers during the hearing session, but right in the next frame he was looking straight to the senators keeping his hands down. This man really has the god speed of Iron Man. But seriously, was that an intentional frame cut while editing the movie or was that an editing mistake? I guess it was an intentional frame cut because I have seen the same thing two more times previously in the movie. Dr. Robbie was gulping a flake of orange into his mouth but then right in the next frame that flake of orange was seen outside his mouth in between his lips and teeth. When Strauss Lewis was in introducing his daughter and son-in-law to Dr. Oppenheimer, both of them were seen smiling but right in the next frame they assumed a blunt face. It was like this kind of fast transition of the facial expression. Therefore, we can say that it was potentially an intentional frame cut but not a mistake and it looks very disgusting. When they were test firing with smaller bombs, you can always hear the sound of the shockwave only a few milliseconds after the explosion. That is a very good level of detailing they could just usually avoid. Folks, head down. Okay. Everybody ready? Head down. Everybody. Folks, head down. Every time during the test fire with smaller explosives, Klaus Fuchs used to keep his head over the barrier to observe how clearly the test went. And this extra curiosity makes sense considering the fact that Fox, I mean Fuchs, was an espionage agent spying for Russia. I won't take up too much of your time. No, not at all. Whatever time you choose. 
If you have seen the movie, you should definitely know that the conversation between Dr. Oppenheimer and Colonel Pash was recorded by this son of a bitch. But did you notice that wanker turning on the audio recorder when Dr. Oppenheimer started confessing valuable information? Mentioned to me a couple of times. Elton. Uh, I believe he's a chemist who works at Shell. Why the fuck was he throwing glasses on the ground? Was he smoking crack? Definitely not. He was observing the sudden scattering of the broken glasses to imagine exactly how a nuclear atom will scatter into smaller nuclei after being bombarded with neutrons. The split apart nuclei will then start crashing onto other atoms which will create more nuclei crashing onto another atom. And this process is called a chain reaction which according to Oppenheimer would potentially destroy the whole world. But the assumption turned out to be wrong in the end. Extra neutrons boil off which could be used to split other uranium atoms. Chain reaction. By throwing the ball onto the wall and catching it back, he was possibly trying to imagine that the chain reaction should give off equal energy release according to the law of physics. And if the chain reaction releases equal force to the fission or fusion mass, the result should also be predetermined, which means the chain reaction will not ignite the atmosphere of the entire planet. Sometimes it's very difficult to understand the movies of director Christopher Nolan because of his notorious habit of articulating his movies. He strongly believes that unnecessary complexity and vagueness is a must for developing a suspense in the movie. He feels more comfort explaining a story as paradoxically as possible unlike James Cameron with his simple and straightforward articulation. Can you imagine what the fuck would happen if Christopher Nolan was given the project of Avatar or the Avengers movie? A supplement movie would also be necessary for the explanation of the main movie.